This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't see you guys there. Well, while you're here, I guess we can do a video. Don't don't twist my arm or anything. It was like the, I think that was the worst intro that I've ever done. By far, I feel that it was the worst intro that I've ever done. Hello and welcome. Why was I starting out with a British accent? Hello and welcome to another video here on youtube.com slash Destiny Said Well. Is that how it's linked? I don't know. Welcome to my official book recommendation video. Basically, I see a lot of stuff asking me for book recommendations, and I know it's a little hard because while I make videos about books, they're kind of all over the place, and maybe you go into a video and I didn't rate really any of them super highly, so you're like, I don't know what you recommend, Destiny. That is what this video is for. I thought I would compile kind of a bunch of recommendations into one of books right now as I am standing here today that I recommend at this very moment in time. Now, this could possibly change, but this is what it is right now, so this is what we're gonna do. I have a few different little subcategories that we're gonna, that I'm gonna recommend for you guys in today's video, so let's get straight into my book recommendations. Hey guys, popping in very quick to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is none other than Squarespace. You guys know I talk about Squarespace quite a bit on my channel because I genuinely believe that if you guys are looking to start an online business, a blog, an online storefront, anything under that little umbrella, then Squarespace is the way to go. Now I've told you guys, I am not the best with technology. Squarespace just makes it so simple and easy. Literally, there are so many templates as soon as you get onto Squarespace that you can start messing with to see how you would want your website and you can customize them in the way that you want there's so many different templates to use for inspiration and that is like my favorite thing to go on and like see all these templates because I am creative not to do my own horn but I do feel like I am a little creative but sometimes I just need a little bit of a kickstart and those templates really help me with that also Squarespace has so many tools for different things you need whether that is a blog an online storefront or anything that you are trying to run with Squarespace I have been using Squarespace to try to make a blog version of my YouTube channel somewhere for people to visit and I have been enjoying using their blogging features. It makes it very easy for you to share stories, videos, images, anything of that sort. Also, I am somebody who really loves to just look at analytics. Like it's just something that I love to do with anything and so I really appreciate Squarespace's analytics that they offer you. You can really see where people are coming from in the world, like how they're visiting your website and it helps you see what channels are are most effective what's working for your website and like where people are coming from how often they're visiting how many visitors that you have and so many more analytics for you to look through they offer extensions where you can connect anything into your website that's via a third party if you guys are interested you guys can head to squarespace.com to get a free trial and then when you guys are ready to launch you guys can head to squarespace.com slash destiny said well to get 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain thank you so much again to squarespace for sponsoring today's video and let's get into my book recommendations <sighs> Okay, hello guys. So, first of all, I'm gonna start off obviously with my five star reads. Now, these are the five star reads that kind of stand the test of time, as in they stay a five star read. Now, there may be some five star reads that you know that I have that are missing. These are like my top five star reads. So, these are the ones that are like super duper important. And by the way, these are in no particular order. These are just kind of like how I thought them up. This isn't like a ranking. So, first of all, we have Beach Read by Emily Henry. This, I feel, is a book that has genuinely stood the test of time like I just love this book so entirely much this was like one of my like 10 out of 5 stars that I just love if you guys have never heard of Beach Read have never read Beach Read you might be living under a rock I don't know Beach Read is about two authors and basically they have this like past with each other and they are living in beach houses that are right next to each other basically they make a pact to see if they switch genres as january writes romance and Gus writes kind of like darker literary fiction if they can switch genres and see who can sell the book before the other and they kind of make this pact and start going on little like dates but they're not really dates type of thing it's just so good and Gus everett is just i love him and then, of course, we have Happy Place by Emily Henry, which is actually her most recent release. This released back in May, and I feel like people have not stopped talking about it 
me included. Now this released in April, so sorry. This is genuinely a book that I have read recently that has been a five star that has impacted my life heavily, heavily. This book you're following Harriet and basically she has this group of friends that she's been close with since she's in college and every single summer they go to Maine for the lobster festival and you are basically getting told a story of friendship. Meanwhile, there is a subplot of a romance between her and her ex-fiance and you find out what's going on between that. This book is so, so special and dear to me because I love it so much and I feel like there's so many lessons to learn out of this book with friendships, relationships, even parental relationships, sibling relationships is so packed tightly into this book. I have so many annotations just wound all through this book. It is genuinely, I think, my favorite book that I've read this year. <laughs> okay, next up I have The Boys of Tommen. Tommen? Tommen? I still don't know if I'm saying either one of those right. This series by Chloe Walsh is absolutely I just don't even know what to say about it. I feel like I talk about the series so much, but genuinely, guys, if you are looking for something in a series that you want a found family, you want basically a character study, because this series is genuinely just a character study. You are really doing nothing except just watching these characters live their life and go through conflicts, go through things with people, have relationships with people. It is just so, so good. Like, I love it so much. The first two books follow Johnny and Shannon. The second two follow Joey and Aoife, and I love them. It's just, talk about them so much. These are some special editions that I got, but I genuinely don't think that I could, I don't know, I, don't, I just love it. No, you guys aren't getting through a video without me talking about Akatar yet again. But if we're talking about my five stars out of five star reads, it has to be Akatar. Literally, I don't ever shut up about this. Literally, when people see Akatar related things, they're always sending them to me. I'm always buying Akatar related things. I it just lives rent free in my brain. I think it takes up. A, I think if I were to say it would take up about 20% of my brain. 20% of my brain power every single day is used towards Akatar series. It is genuinely something. And I know that it's dramatic to say life-changing, but it's just life-changing. I mean, I don't know what you guys want me to say. I'm telling the truth here. I'll, all I'm going to talk about is Akatar, the first book in this series. These are all the books that are out currently in the series. So you are following Feyre, and she is basically trying to help her family survive, and she does something in the forest one day that kind of breaks this, like, treaty thing that they have going on with the Fey that live in their world. And there's a bunch of, like, rumors about the Fey that they're dangerous, and they kill humans, and they don't like humans, and she has to go live with a Fey because of what she did in the woods. I'm trying to give you guys a very vague description because I want you to go into it pretty blind because that's honestly what I did. Even though I had seen Akatar everywhere, I knew nothing about it. And so I went into it, absolutely loved it. This one specifically is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't, I still to this day do not know if she tried to keep with that theme through these books. If so, it wasn't prominent, but it is so, so good. I'm not going to get these out because there's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books in this series and they're pretty thick, okay? The next, of course, I could not not talk about the Throne of Glass series. Listen, I think about the Throne of Glass series genuinely every day. It is so good. This is by the same author of Akatar, so we have this one, this one, and this one, which we will also actually talk about here in a second. I love Throne of Glass so much. I love Akatar, right? And I really feel like my love for Akatar is within the characters. I like the plots of them, but I love the characters so, so much. Like, that's what I'm reading it for. With Throne of Glass, the plot and the characters is so good. It is like nothing I've read before, genuinely. I love it so much. There is like stories and twists and heartbreak and love and all of the stuff that you were going through. And in these books, you get multiple POVs of like all of the characters in the book you were reading in their mind at some point, which while I was reading it, I was like, okay, this is a little much. Like at first I was like, okay, I'm getting like eight different people's point of view and it's all told from the third person so it can get a little confusing, but I loved it so, so much. If you guys want me to talk more in detail about any of these fantasy books, because I was going to recommend fantasy books, but I have a whole entire 
fantasy dedicated video where I talk about literally every single fantasy book that I own, if I recommend it, if I think it's beginner friendly, all of that stuff. So go watch that if you want more thoughts on that. I also could not not talk about in my five star the Crescent City series by Sarah J Mass as well. That's what all three of these past ones have been. So this one is ongoing as well. The third book comes out in January somebody sedate me until then because genuinely I don't know if I can keep going on without it but at first when I read this book it was very challenging I was like what is going on but guys I quickly adapted and just fell in love with this series I love it so much especially House of Sky and Breath like all I'm saying is that read definitely read Akatar first then read Throne of Glass and then read these that's how I'd recommend you read Sarah J. Mass's books. I love House of Sky and Breath so much that I literally just always have it just out there for people. Next up, we have the Addicted series, which is weird because I actually feel like I have not talked about the Addicted series in such a long time. And I used to like not shut up about the Addicted series. And so I get comments sometimes that I see where people are like, what about the Addicted series? Do you not love the Addicted series anymore? Literally, the Addicted series has so many different posters and wall rent up in my room i love the addicted series so much i also love the callaway sister series but i kind of tie in the callaway sister series with addicted when i think of it being a five stars do you know what i mean it's because they have the same characters but i just have such a soft spot for lily and low which is who the addicted books follow i love the addicted series because i love lily and low me when i first started reading the series would never believe that because in the first like few books i was like oh I just can't I can't with them but then I started falling in love with them because of their character development and how absolutely real that they feel it's so good guys if you again are wanting found family if you guys are wanting just a close-knit group of people they're rich there's a ton of drama you will have a great time with this series then we have love in other words by Christina Lauren this is about Elliot and Macy it is a childhood friends to lovers past and present point of view you are getting a second chance romance with this it is so good the they are two bookish people Elliot is just to die for absolutely to die for for me next we have Daisy Jones and the Six which I when I recommend this book I'm like I'm sure everybody has read it by now because when the TV show came out I saw a lot of people start picking up this book this book is absolutely amazing I annotated it right before the book came out because I wanted to reread it and annotate it I look I mean just look at the tabs on this book is really like when you see that I love a book but then it's annotated and tabbed like that's how you know that I really 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 love a book because I don't love annotating and tabbing because it takes a lot of time and I'm kind of lazy. I literally have so many just like annotations and tabs and everything through this book. It is so genuinely special to me. There are so many things that you can draw from this book. It feels so real. Also it's like lightly based off of Fleetwood Mac and Fleetwood Mac is literally like my favorite thing on this planet. So that also hits home for me. And then we have Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros, which this is a very new thing to my five star reads. But listen, I have thought about this book since I've read it every single day. Genuinely, like there's multiple books I think about every single day. Okay, they live rent free in my brain. I went into it because I was in a book slump, which I will talk more about that in my monthly reading wrap up. I picked up this book when I was in a book slump because everybody, I saw everybody and their mom talking about this book. Okay, I could not scroll through TikTok without seeing like five TikToks of this. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a read. I'm gonna read it, see what all the hype's about. I, I see what the hype's about. I literally was kicking my feet, giggling, so enthralled into this book. I couldn't put it down. Like, I literally, if I had to put it down, because I knew they had to go somewhere and put it down, all I was thinking about the whole entire time was this book. It's a very easy fantasy to understand as well. Like, there's not really any world building in it, which I feel like is usually where the difficulty lies. It's so good. And the romance, and the plot, and it's so fast-paced. This is the perfect pacing for my brain literally love it so much and then we have by a thread by lucy score which this genuinely like when i was thinking what are my five star reads this book popped up because i love lucy scores books okay they're so good especially the knock em out series but by a thread just did something for me okay it just did something just the pacing of their relationship and the way that the relationship transpired and the acts of love between them like it when you read it you don't think it's a super overly romantic book but then you quickly learn that it is it's basically you're following dom and Allie, 
and Dom gets Allie fired from her job, but then she gets hired at his mom's company and they have to work together and he's like, I'm going to fire you. She's like, you literally can't. And they just kind of have this banter going on. And I love Lucy Score's banter too. It's just so, it's just so good. If you haven't read a Lucy Score book yet, I would definitely recommend starting with By a Thread because it's my favorite one of hers. Lastly, in this little category, we're going to be talking about Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. I love this book. I read this book in January. This was one of my first five-star reads of this year and just whenever I think about a romance and this is sports romance by the way college football I love Noah Riley so much that I got a sticker of him and put his jersey in the back of my Kindle type of thing just the blueprint everything that he does is just amazing and also this feels like kind of a character study in a way where you're basically just there's like loosely a plot but you're just following this girl and her group of friends that she's had her whole entire life and they're going to college and they play football and they're navigating this new like way of life now i want to talk to you guys since we just talked about my five star books i want to talk to you guys about my four ish star books so this means like four and above four ish like four four point two five four and a half four point seven five these are the books that didn't quite make the five star list but i still love dearly first of all we have carrie soto is back by taylor jenkins reed i feel like i've been talking about this book for a little bit i don't know i did not think like when i picked this up i picked this up for a video and i didn't think like i would end up liking as much as i did even though i do really enjoy taylor jenkins reed's books and i was like it's about tennis like i don't know how i feel I ended up loving this book. I'm pretty sure I gave this a 4.75. Like, that's the official rating for this book. I, it just was so much more. It's like an underdog comeback story. Also, writing a female character that most perceive as the B word. We hate that. It's just because she's super confident and seeing that that's how kind of society and the world views strong women is more of being she than just being confident in herself like stuff like that that was happening in this book that i just really loved the messaging behind it and i really liked the story and i was really caring about her tennis matches and everything in this book we have another 4.75 stars for me and that is tomorrow x3 i love this book so much first of all this cover is just absolutely beautiful and i remember how i kept looking at this book when it released for barnes and didn't pick it up for months and i was like why did i not pick this up sooner you guys know when you get that feeling in a book it is both the best and worst feeling because you're like i could have read this sooner but i feel like this was the perfect time to read it i just was so enthralled in the story it's about two people you're kind of getting like a past and present point of view you're following these people through their basically whole entire lives as they're creating a video game how these there's two main characters and they met in the hospital and you are following from you are following them from then all the way through their life as they're kind of navigating life together and making this video game it was so interesting and also takes place in the 80s and you guys know if you guys are, wa are watchers and viewers of my channel you guys know i love the 80s i love the 90s i love the 70s anything set in that time i'm like sign me up i love it so much so also getting some of that in there and it felt very retro and i just loved it so much i felt like i was in it like i felt like i genuinely was like a ghost standing over them watching all of this happen like i have said before that i have a very hard time imagining things in my brain like i'm delusional so i can make up a lot of stuff in my brain but for some reason i cannot make up like images very well like when i'm reading i'm not picturing it super well and when i can picture things in a book very well because of the way the author has wrote it I always appreciate that. I also have these two books by Sarah Adams. When in Rome was a four stars and I actually upped Practice Makes Perfect to a four stars as well after thinking about it. I really enjoy Sarah Adams books. If you guys are looking for a, just a cute short read, these two books specifically are small time romances. I love these so much. They were cute. I was laughing out loud. The banter was good. Okay, now I'm going to recommend you guys a few series that I feel like are really good to just sit down and binge at one time. Like you want to sit down and have a series. It's not too long, but it's not too short. First of all, I would 100% recommend the Chestnut Springs series. If you were looking for kind of like a small town cowboyish romance, I would definitely recommend these. There are four books out right now. I, th I forget when the next book is coming out. You start off with Florida. Flawless, heartless, powerless, then reckless. They are all following different people. Some of them are siblings, like 
these this book is following Rhett then you follow his brother in this book and then you follow Jasper in this book who is kind of like an honorary brother and then in this book you are following the guy that Rhett mentors. If you guys want to read about rich men. I'll recommend you guys the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher. Now, I really enjoy the series. This is honestly a five-star series for me. That's why I'm recommending it to you guys. If you guys are looking for something like this, I'm just super, I mean, we're talking like B. Dreamland Billionaires. Rich where you can just kind of do whatever you want type. You, you, sometimes you like to escape inside of those books, okay? I'm not judging you. I also, I have the two copies before she was with Bloom, and then I have the Bloom one, so the numbers are off. Ugh. Buy her as well. I would also recommend the Throttle series if you guys are kind of wanting kind of a sports-ish romance. This is about F1 racing. If you were to tell me a year ago that I would be recommending you guys to read the Magnolia Park series, I would definitely think that there was something wrong with me. But I do thoroughly enjoy this. I actually gave this book, The Great Undoing, a five stars. I never thought that that day would come for the series, but it did. Magnolia Parks, again, if you're wanting to look for rich people drama with some emotional depth to it and really fall in love with some characters, even though you're like, they're kind of insufferable at some points, you can see their flaws, but you still love them anyway, I would definitely recommend Magnolia Parks. Although Shatter Me is not my favorite thing in the world, I would 100% say that this is a great series to binge because the chapters are short, the books aren't that long, and this is a dystopian world where I feel like you can easily get into it and there's a romance subplot that people absolutely eat up. And then I would also recommend you guys read the Good Girl's Guide to Murder Trilogy, especially since the TV show is now being made. I'm so happy because the casting is absolutely perfect, just how I imagined them. Basically, the Good Girl's Guide to Murder, you follow Pip, and she, for a school project, has decided to kind of look into this local murder that happened that everyone kind of has closed case it, but she does not believe that this is really what happened. She doesn't believe Believe that this kid killed his girlfriend so she decides to launch like a podcast investigation for her school project to find out what really happened next I want to quickly recommend you guys just a few of my favorite little cute little romances first of all we have love theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood this book just came out and I really really enjoyed it I had such a good time reading it it's my favorite book of hers so far I would recommend you guys quite literally any Abby Jimenez book because they are all cute romances with some depth to them and have great banter and I just there's just something about them that does something to my brain. Next up we have You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel. I love this book so much genuinely. When I think about little cute rom-coms I always think of this book. It's about a couple and they're engaged but they haven't gotten married yet because they've kind of hit a rough spot in their relationship where they're not really talking to each other like they used to and neither one of them really wants to get married anymore but both of them are too chicken to get out of the marriage so they basically start pranking each other to get the other person to get out of the marriage and it is so good. Next up I have The Dead Romantics which I actually read last year and this is a perfect book for the fall. I know we're in summer. I know I know you're like do not tell me about the fall. I know some of y'all are in school too so you guys are like do not tell me about the fall right now when I'm trying to summer this up. But I do want to recommend you guys this book for the fall time and just because it is a cute romance that I like. This is about a girl and she can see dead people. <laughs> I know listen stick with me and she is back in her hometown for a reasoning and she starts seeing this guy that she had seen alive not that long ago and she's kind of helping him go through this journey meanwhile they're kind of fixing this mystery up together and then I have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan this book is a small town romance about a girl who has to move to the small town for a reason that I'm not going to tell you guys because it's a spoiler but she has to move to the small town and she meets Archer and he doesn't talk to anybody in this town for reasoning and they kind of strike up this friendship with each other and it is just such a cute beautiful story if you guys are looking for that okay and then to end off this video I have a few thrillers because I thought that it would be fun to recommend a few thrillers because I'm very harsh I'm a very harsh reader with my thrillers so let's talk about them first of all we have the last word by Taylor Adam this book I recently read and loved it. I have a hard time rating thrillers because I feel like I can guess plot twists easy. The plot of this book is somebody leaves a one-star review and the author starts stalking her. Genius. Genius. I would also recommend you guys his other novel which is No Exit. This is also a thriller and this is about a girl who's coming home and she has to stop at this rest stop because the winter storm is really bad and she's kind of like snowed into this rest stop and she finds a little girl in the back of the van that somebody has kidnapped and there's just a bunch of people on this rest stop 
and it's one of them that kidnapped her and she's trying to figure out how to save this little girl who kidnapped her and it is genuinely so thrilling we also have rock paper scissors by alice meany this is another book where i genuinely could not guess the plot twist in this book to save my life like i thought i had this book all figured out i didn't and even though that may sound negative but it's actually positive when I'm reading thrillers. Like, when you can catch me 100% off guard, I'm all for it. Okay, I actually said that I was that was going to be the last category. But I do want to recommend to you guys a few quick little YA romances that I think that you guys should read. First of all, we have the Inheritance Games Trilogy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen this recommended to you so many times. If you are a fan of Knives Out and Clue and want it in a YA kind of little universe, I would 100% recommend this. This does also have a love triangle in it, which I think a lot of people enjoy. I enjoyed it too, and that is something that I can't usually say because as I've already stated within this video, I don't like love triangles, but it was so twisty turny. The chapters are so short, so you feel like you're flying through the book. Obviously, I have The Summer I Turned Pretty. I only have these two books because these are the covers that were easiest to grab but there's actually three books in this series especially since season two is literally about to come out in july so you guys need to get to reading this if you haven't already but this is so good these are the perfect reads for the summer it is about a girl and her name is belly and she goes to this beach house every single summer with her mom's best friend who has two boys that are around her age that she's grown up with and she's in love with one of them and you're kind of just reading the story it feels so nostalgic like it makes me think of summers that i had growing up and i just love it also lastly better than the movies if you are a rom-com movie lover you are going to love better than the movies by lynn painter every single chapter starts with a rom-com quote she's always referencing rom-coms and it just feels like reading a rom-com i actually said that it feels like reading the duff movie just not as whatever as that movie is those are all of the recommendations that i have for you guys today hopefully you guys got some book recommendations for you to read that it, that would be the whole point of today's video so hopefully you did that from today's video if you guys did you guys know what to do like comment subscribe all that youtube stuff that you guys know how to do and i will see you guys when i see you peace